on Kaleidoscope today, we are at Park Street Gome, where gift giving is a wonderful experience. Let Santa do the walking and you do the gifting at Park Street Gome to keep your tables full, your gifts overflowing and your spirits high. All the goodies you would love to give as gifts, customized hampers or just to sneak in a bit of yummy goodness for yourself too. So welcome to Kaleidoscope and happy almost there Christmas. A wonderful Christmas tree size thank you to our partners on the show. Selling for Life, CDB, The Daily Morning, Park Street Gourmet, Park Street Wines and Zip Zip. Just one week more before we play Santa on the show with those amazing gifts we have to offer. Embracing the spirit of the season at Cinnamon, we gift you some very generous dinners for two from Cinnamon City Hotels. And a bumper hamper from Park Street Gourmet, where we are right now. And all you have to do is inbox any of our platforms with your name, contact number and your address. And next week's Santa Day. We are at Park Street Gourmet today, bringing you CDB Snapshot. The IMF approves the extended fund facility giving access of 337 million US dollars to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's worker remittances topped the 5 billion mark within the first 11 months of this year. Fitch says world growth is looking good as China's consumption normalizes and a pickup in growth is seen in the US. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is reportedly in dire risk of completely toppling over. A diamond ring worth 800,000 US dollars goes missing in Paris, only to be found inside the bag of a vacuum. on your goals. We will take care of the risks. Silly go life. So we are at Park Street Gome bringing you Selinko Life News Capsule. COP28 was high on the agenda in the last two weeks and Sri Lanka too was in Dubai with a delegation and launched the International Climate Change University. As a country, we have ratified the Paris Agreement on Climate Change plus numerous other conventions memorandums and agreements and Sri Lanka even has a climate advisor. What do all these mean? Can we use carbon credits to our advantage? I asked a few questions from the director CEO of the Climate Conservation Consortium, Sanit DS Vijayaratna, who popped into our studio. Do we really as a nation fully understand the implications of this agreement and I mean what is on the table here? There's a marked lack of transparency on a lot of these things. Um, I know we, we've dealt with some government departments. Some, see, Sri Lanka is a signatory to the Paris Accord, but nobody down the chain understands how those commitments were. And if you ask them, they'll say, well, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. So I think there's a marked lack of uh, transparency and communication in what the targets are and what they are doing to achieve it. But uh, in, in terms of the Paris Accord, I, I don't see much evidence of us actually achieving those very, very challenging commitments we've set out to, uh, especially in renewable energy and forestry. Um, so I don't know. And that's unfortunately, that's the bottom line. So how does a country benefit from carbon credits? A carbon credit uh, project is meant to stimulate or develop uh, a project that reduces environment, uh, environmental impacts, but mainly greenhouse gases. But it's also a project that would not get done under normal circumstances. So uh, we have been uh, countries like Indonesia, uh, there's a big project there called the Rimbaraya project that protects natural rainforests, protects the orangutans, protects the fauna, and that's funded by uh, the use of carbon credits. Uh, my team has worked with uh, some large uh, mangrove planting projects in Myanmar, and ordinarily there wouldn't be no investment into planting mangroves, but because of carbon credits, they were able to get significant investment from the international community to fund large-scale mangrove uh, forestry. So there is a big benefit if you know how to harness it. So for a country to understand the advantages and actually act on it and benefit from it, 
the people have to take ownership. How does this happen? What do the people need to know? The first thing that especially the private sector needs to do is really uh, research the background, right? Um, we've had so many clients come up to us who have absolutely no knowledge of it, or they have got a lot of misinformation about it. First thing that members of the public should do is make themselves aware of what are the commitments we've done, what are the regulations, what, what is a carbon credit and what governs it and what is the market and, you know, be better advised before trying to go down this road. What are the pitfalls, the challenges that you will face in getting that ownership? I think the biggest problem here in Sri Lanka is that we, we don't have scale. Okay. Uh, the projects I talked to you about are very large scale, 50,000 hectares. Uh, typically people when, uh, when they go in for a carbon credit, uh, a forestry, I'm using forestry as an example, uh, you're looking at 10 to 20,000 hectares of land at least uh, because it does not uh, make financial sense otherwise. Uh, because a startup cost of some of these projects can be up to about $100,000. And, you, and then there's no guarantee that you can get the registration at the end of that. So you have to be willing to you know, invest that kind of money up front without a guaranteed uh, return on that. Sri Lanka doesn't have that much land in one place. So almost by default, we are you know, barred from doing a lot of these things simply because the finances don't work. So we have to be very careful about what we try to plan. Uh, we have to make sure that it's practical and that it can be done at sufficient scale so that it makes financial sense. Policy people planet is what I'm thinking of, yes. Thank you, Sanit, very Thank much. You, now, a quick look at our oil, stock and gold prices. At the Colombo Stock Exchange this week, the oil share price index stabilised and moved upward by 1%, although daily average turnover levels remained below 1 billion rupees. Oil prices slid downward to 72 US dollars per barrel, the lowest seen since June this year on rising US inflation rates and lower demand. And gold prices lost their luster this week by dropping below the 2000 US dollars per ounce level. Santa is no longer a rare sight. New York City held its annual SantaCon last week, where thousands of Santas, elves, and even Grinches descended to celebrate the season and go on a bark roll. We're continuing our Gaul Literary Festival highlights this week with a dynamo of artistry, Naomi Apsara. The writer, filmmaker and poet entered the literary world with her debut poetry collection, Throw Me Mountains, in 2021. But she's been making headlines way before that. Her debut short film, The Tea is Cold, has been recognized at local and international film festivals. And her experimental film, Pick Me Up, is being featured at the Tropfest Film Festival in Melbourne. Naomi is currently working on her debut feature film. Exciting stuff. I was eager to ask her all about her leaving her corporate job behind, to work in the arts and about her career trajectory and experiences that shaped her poignant and soul-grabbing works of art. Naomi, welcome. Your short film, The Tea is Cold, uh, won a lot of recognition at various uh, international film festivals. What actually triggered you to go on that path and what did you learn when you were filming in Jaffna? The idea that I discuss in the movie, the lingering post-war effects that had been troubling in my, uh, troubling, I've been troubled by the idea for a long time and just when I got out of the corporate environment, Minor Matters, the produ producer of my movie, they contacted me and asked whether I would like to do something and I was like, ideal opportunity and uh, I jumped on it and if I, if I'm to tell you the experience in Jaffna, if you watch the movie, you'll realize, so what we see, uh, what, what we hear is what we believe. But when you go there, I went as a very lighthearted person, like the protagonist of my movie. And the perspective completely changed when I was working there. Tell me about your experimental film project, Pick Me Up. It was shown in Melbourne, right? So I had just bought my DSLR camera and I saw some, and I was studying business. I was doing my master's in business management and I saw this Facebook post saying that there is an international film festival coming to Melbourne, 48 hours, 
prop fest 48 hours film festival so you are given 48 hours and you are given a prop dialogue and a genre and the genre was something called mocku mockumentary i had to google it okay and you are given only 48 hours to write a script do a movie so i gathered some of my friends and i we did something really fun and spontaneous and it was screened <laughs> that is my first filmmaking experience then tell me about salon cup the talk I was working for Capital Maharaja organization for their platform called Kiki and I was asked to um, gather stories I was asked to find some work uh, to put in the platform and I was working around it and you know like at work you, you gossip and say certain things I and I just casually told one of my colleagues the senior management you know what happened to me at a salon like this happened and this person came and this happened this story and we were talking about how people talk about their really personal things and political things at salons then he was like why can't we make a series out of it and it happened <laughs> it was actually fun so now you're into your debut film afinia how different is that from your usual work it's going to be extremely different and contrasting from whatever that i've been doing uh, it's going to be a very long and slow process afinia is going to be my debut feature film and i had the luxury of developing and uh, developing the the story the treatment at busan nation film school where i was attending i was awarded a fellowship and with some prestigious teachers from across the world now throw me mountains has been described as exploring questions of love desire loss and isolation yeah. what is it in your words throw me mountains i must confess that i didn't write a book but i've been scribbling every time i felt sad or happy or any kind of deep emotions which i couldn't tell people i was scribbling and i had this really personal blog i was collecting and the link was given to some of the close friends when it became a collection people were like why don't you publish it at the beginning i was quite reluctant because it was so personal right people would read you just like that i was like why not and it's been received quite well and and I I went to a couple of uh, literary talks and it's I'll be at Gold Literary Festival as well. So good luck uh, Naomi and we hope to see you at Gold the Gold Literary Festival. It's getting very close to Christmas and I am here at the Shirani Joseph Tisserum Foundation which was formerly known as the RCCI Center. The center is a day care for over 30 young people who are intellectually and physically impaired. But come Christmas time each of them gets into the Christmas spirit and this year they started something new tie and dye t-shirts sarongs and table runners to add to their repertoire of useful christmas gifts of beautiful earrings christmas decorations and wrapping paper so we've always been trying to find skills that our students have that can be applicable to a project that can also have a economic benefit to them so we always observe their skill set they can participate in various different aspects of this the dyeing of it the folding of it so that was something that motivated us to start this and it actually quite uh, came from the popularity of them too maybe we made a few and then it sort of took off from there founded by shirani joseph tisserum The center is truly a haven that gives independence to these young people focusing on the various skills that would bring a positive narrative to their lives. There's everything from uh keeping up with the manual dexterity, working in an environment with their colleagues, the satisfaction that gives the continuation of the social communication skills. But more than that there is a dignity of labor. Having a purpose in life is a very powerful thing. and for some of the communities that we serve they come from very difficult circumstances and having the ability to make a living and support their families even a little bit is very very powerful what better way than to give a gift made with love by those who want to be accepted for who they are so it's goodbye from our christmas year board here at park street gourmet don't forget we have lots of gifts waiting for you see you next week